try to go too fast with taxidermy, you don't take your time, you're going to pay for it later. So mm -hmm. it's best just to go ahead and do it right the first time. And if that means one horn at a time, one eye at a time, one ear at a time, that is the best way to do it. Uh, interestingly enough, Kerry learned a lot of what he knows now by watching YouTube. That's correct. Oh. Yeah, I mean, uh, not, not really any formal training. I didn't go to a taxidermy school and nothing against taxidermy schools, but I mean, you can learn so much from YouTube nowadays. Oh my yeah. gosh. I mean, I, I got my plumbing license on YouTube. <laughs> no, I didn't. I'll put a link to Carrie's info in the description below so you can go check him out. And if you need any taxidermy in the Texas area, Give them a shout. Welcome to Texas Beard Adventures. I'm Brad Harrow, your host, and today we're over here at the taxidermist. That ram that I shot, what was it, last October, Kerry? Yes, it was. Uh, it is in the works, and I wanted to show you all the process. I'm over here at Trails to Trophies with my buddy, Kerry. We're over here at his shop. Say hello, Kerry. Hello. And, um... What do we got going today? You tell me. All right, so this is a beautiful all dad ram that Brad shot in October with his buddy Brad. And Brad and Brad. Brad and Brad. So he showed up and uh, they were massive rams, beautiful. Well, beautiful. thank you. I mean, I get that a lot, Ma the massive part. So we uh, unloaded those bad boys. We got them to the uh, tanner and we got those hides back, uh, I'd say about three weeks ago, four weeks ago. Yeah. All tan, ready to go. Okay. So this is just, I'm just going to give you a little bit of taxidermy 101 on a ram. A lot of people don't realize with a ram, they're a horned animal. They're not an antler animal like a deer. So a deer will drop their antlers every year and regrow them. All up in here is tissue and membrane. So they have to pop these horns, okay? So you got to submerge these in, in water for about a week. And you boil them, and then you can pressure wash them, and eventually the pop. They'll pop. They'll pop. So that's look at what, that. So that's what they look like. So that's underneath the brown stuff. That and that's what is that bone? It's all bone. It's very porous, extremely porous. So yeah. Wow. And then I've got it where it's drilled in, but you can't see it. But all this essentially is solid bone on a ram. So that's why they're able to to fight. Is they have all that protection. Um, so what we're going to do is to get these back on, you use the Bondo method. So we're going to do the Bondo method, and we're going to be able to slide these horns back on, and you'll never know. Never, yeah. But we're going to have to cut these off uh, so we can do that. I got you. And how, so is there a certain area where you cut them? Uh, I mean, you cut them down to here or what? You want to give enough room so it will adhere to the, to the, to the actual... Uh, Horn. To the horn so, itself. So you want to start to, to turn a little bit. That's where you want to cut it. Gotcha. Yeah. And why why do you cut it? Why not leave it all the way on there? You just don't need all this. You just don't need you it. You just don't need it. So you're going to be using a lot of bondo that you don't need. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. And it will also slide better when this is when that's gone. Cut down. Yeah. yeah. And what do you cut that with? We're going to use that old saw right there. Oh really? Yeah. Just a miter saw. Just a miter saw. All right, so this is the bottom of the skull cap, so it looks and like that. yeah, and that the back part's the brain, of course, right. and that's how they're able to uh, to, fight. to fight. And you've cut the the horns, the ends, the bone on the inside of the horns. Yep. Yeah. So it's it's not solid, huh? It, it, no, no, no. There's a lot of blood and membrane and tissue running through there. Wow. But this always just amazes me: the thickness of the skull. No kidding. So Bondo is a taxidermist's favorite material it seems like you use bondo for ears you can uh, rebuild antlers with bondo you get a lot of those situations where people shoot deer and uh, they have broken antlers so they want them to you know look like they did before they broke them off right and we it's, it's it's a challenge to do those, but we, we can. I've done several. 
you know, Bondo is a method to, to rebuild those. Epoxy is another method, or if you have, if you're lucky enough and you have an extra rack laying around, you can uh, splice with a with another rack. So, bring our horn. Gonna let that cure. All right, so we got the bondo mixed up. And we're gonna apply it to the stole base here. And the reason why you're doing this, and a lot of taxes in this don't do this because it's time consuming and bondo is not cheap. But I believe in quality. So what is the the point of bondoing around the skull cap? It, well, it's gonna give it a lot of strength. Okay. Fill in the voids in between the mold and the exactly. and the fur. Right. We're doing the eyes. If you grab one of these eyes, that's what I'll get. That's a little pretty yellowish looking so eye. So the, the every every animal has its own set of different eyeballs, yeah, right? For the most part. I mean deer, your deer are pretty standard, axis are a little bit lighter. Okay. Um, but your rams, I mean it's a wide there's variety. a whole gamut. Yeah, a whole gamut. Of you looking at me? <laughs> what are you looking at? So what do you what do we got going on over here? Okay, so we've already got that one in. Yes. And it's gonna slide in like that. Now, a lot of these forms, what's what I like about Jets is his are usually the eye sockets open pretty good. But, uh, you know, what you'll notice on a Ram, I don't like, they don't have real bug eyed eyes where they're kind of bulging out. Yeah. So, especially the older ones, uh, your U's usually will have eyes that are kind of bugging out. Yes. But your older, more mature, just like a deer, they're going to be more into the to the eye socket. I got you. Right? So we're going to open that up with this eye ball and set back. Let me see the back side of the eye. These are glass oh, eyes. Oh, okay. So Tohican makes a lot of the, the glass eyes that I order. Um, and I think that they're the best in the industry. I mean, it just looks so real. Yeah. Know? So, all right. So now that we've got that kind of... So now, if you look at it, it's sitting into that socket a little bit mm -hmm. more. So it gives it an older animal look. Gotcha. More mature look. Kind of like you. Exactly. I mean, coming from the young buck, you know. <laughs> There's not enough epoxy to help this guy. Uh, Stick this epoxy in here like this. Get that eye lined up. And so the ram, a ram, it's not going to be straight, straight like that. They're going to be a little bit of an angle. So what I'll do is I'll step back. I don't want to get in the way of the camera. Gotcha. And you'll just kind of. This one's already been done. So I just kind of line it up with the other one. Gotcha. You're eyeballing the eyeballs. <laughs> so we got the eyes are set. So we're going to let those cure. Um, when you get a form, it's got a glazed material over it. So when they when they manufacture these, it's 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 built into the foam. It's a glaze. So you have to rough it up with what they call stout rougher. And the reason why you do that, so when you put your hide paste, it will adhere to the form. Because if you don't, it's not going to adhere real well. So I've already kind of roughed up around the eyes because I knew I was going to do the eyes. So just to give you an idea, you just do this across the whole whole form pulled that one off and it's it's uh kind of at, at a stage now where to where we're gonna go to this one we're gonna fast forward this is uh brad's friend brad yes uh, that shot this on the same hunt and it's almost identical i mean it's very close in the size right My, mine's just a uh you know like a two inches bigger but that's okay some guys use uh fishing fishing wire some guys use regular thread that is Good old fashioned dental floss. I was gonna say, it looks like dental floss. Yeah. Before, you know, we slide this guy on here, we take the horns off, we slide the, the, the uh, cape on here, and then I don't, you know, everybody's different in how they do it. I don't apply any hide paste. I wanna get it on here, make sure everything is set, get the ears right, and then I do all my sewing. And you have a lot of sewing back here. Yeah. Because when they take the, when they cut these, typically, They'll start here at the top and they'll run and do what's called a Y cut. So they'll have a cut here, cut here, and then straight down. Right. Every now and then you'll get one where it's all the way down. So we got to re-sew the whole thing. Uh, 
Uh, this one wasn't like that, fortunately. So anyway, I've got it all sewed up. Um, and we'll come back and we'll cut all of this off. Let's go back to you, you take the horns off and or antlers, whatever the animal is, right? Mm -hmm. And then you slide the hide on and then you have that Y pattern cut. You reattach the horns or antlers to the, to the mold. Right. And then you, how do you work that, the, the top skull cap in? So what, what, at that point, you're going to fill it in with clay. Okay. Possibly even epoxy up in here. Okay. You're okay. going to build it up. And you, then you put your hide paste after I've done clay around the eyes, okay. around the nose. And get my ears set with clay. Okay. I use clay quite a bit in taxidermy. So you get all that set, and then what you do is you've got a tool here. Everybody uses a different type of timer. There's many different tools you can use, but this is a good one. And you're actually, with taxidermy, it's a lot of tucking. Mm -hmm. That's basically what you're doing. Tucking the eyelids in, tucking in your nostrils. So around here, you're tucking in. Tucking in that fur underneath, yeah, underneath that. So it'll, so it'll hold. I got you. Okay. And then I, you know, some guys will use uh, nails or screws to hold it. I use a really high-powered glue. It's actually fletching glue for arrows. And oh. I'll run that all the way across. And, it, and, you, and you put that on before you tuck it in there? I tuck it. So you, you put the glue and then tuck it up in there so it'll hold. I see. Exactly. Awesome. Yep. See, once this cures, is it? No going back. Point of no return, huh? That's it. Back and kind of clean it up after it's dry. That's it. Cool. We're gonna come back and you can see where I dremeled all this out. Yes. Okay. The nostril. The nostril all dremeled out. So we're gonna come back. We've got our epoxy that I mixed. So we're gonna throw some epoxy in there. And again, you know, some taxidermists may not even do this part. I mean, I think I would hope that most do this because what you're doing is you're covering up that that foam form back there because mm -hmm. if you really want to look you know you get that's the first thing people do when they pick these up oh yeah they look in the ears and they look in the nose it cracks me up they all do it all right we are back over here at carrie's and he's gonna finish up my aw dad and uh what we got going on today carrie all right so what we're gonna do is we've got the this beautiful aw dad all prepped and ready he's dry um We've epoxied around the eyes, which we did on the last shoot last right. video. We've epoxied the nose. We've added the little nodules. I don't know if you can see the bumps, but they have nodules, glands on their nose. Yeah, I see that. We've epoxied the interior of the nose. Okay. And sometimes you get a little shrinkage of the cape around here. It's common. Is that is that from being in the pool when it's cold? And the water was cold. <laughs> You mean shrinkage? Yes. <laughs> Significant shrinkage. So you, you feel you were shortchanged? Yes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so what we do is we add a little epoxy, and then we'll paint that a little bit, and then what, what we do, if you can get it, I don't know how close you are, but you see I put the striations in there, so it, it, it basically is going to look like the whole Look thing. like that. Yeah. I see. Cool. This, this happens nine times out of ten. So what we're going to do now... He's ready to get painted, so I've got my paints over here. Okay. And I'm not, this is where I try to be more of an artist. Um, I don't typically, you know, some guys might, and gals may just use one or two colors. I try to make it a little bit more natural. So I'll, I'll blend in some different colors. And... So this is just a, like a fleshy flesh color. Mm -hmm. And then I'll mix it with a little bit of, a little bit of gray. We got our first coat, which is your, your flesh coat. Got that 
out of the way. So now we're going to mix up some paint. We're going to start hitting around the eyes and the nose and the ears. So I'll usually start with the nose. And the thing, thing about an odd ad is they're not, if you really look at them close in the wild or just look at some, some natural photos, they're not just one color. They're going to have kind of a grayish tone to them a little bit. And even almost like a little sparkly look. So what I do is I'll add a little bit of silver, a little bit of gray to the dark brown, and that's going to be our next step. Okay. And that's just the, getting the overspray off of the hair, huh? Yeah, yeah. I mean, they have a natural dark kind of a shadow, but this is going to get all that, that paint off that you don't need. And see, I, I put the, there's a protector over that, and it's called Eye Protect. Mm. It's pretty simple. And it's, a, it's almost a rubbery type of a film. You can paint it on, and then, that, and then you can just freely... We're going to hit it now, just like any other animal. They have wet noses, so we're going to give it that wet nose look. From, from an angle, it looks like they're just drooling with water. Yeah, it does. And we're going to do the same thing around the eyes. Is that him crying from a fight? <laughs> Crying from your dad laying the hammer down on them. You get some some hunters want the natural look. Yeah. Which this would be the natural. I mean, I, obviously I darkened them up a little bit, but th this is going to be your natural look. Yeah. You have elected, like a lot, honestly, to go with a clear coat. Yes. So when you clear coat it, it's going to bring out those dark colors. It's, it's just so pretty. Yeah, it is very pretty. So that'll be the next step. Okay. All right, what you got here, Carrie? Just okay. some wood stain? Yeah, it's just natural clear coat. Men wax or whatever, and you, as you can see, you see the difference. Yeah, I mean, it just really brings out those colors, man. Yeah, it, it, it just to me, it makes all the difference in the world. It looks really nice. Yeah, I mean, you can see the difference between oh, this yeah. is the natural and yep. that's it's it's a huge difference. Pulling the protective cover yep. off of the eyeball. That's what we're gonna do. So we just kind of using an old trusty toothpick. Yep. You fix your friend. Now nah, that looks like a death stamp. Yeah, because obviously if you use, I learned the hard way on that too, if you use a metal tool, you're going to scratch the eyeball. Right. Well, Carrie, you did a beautiful job. Thank you, sir. He looks awesome. I enjoyed Appreciate it. it. Appreciate that. it. And uh, make sure you go to Carrie's Facebook page. Uh, tro uh, Trails to Trophies, right? That's it. We're Trails to Bernie, Texas. Burn, Texas, or as we call it, Bernie. Um, I'll put a link to his Facebook page in the description below. Hope you enjoyed this episode of Texas Beard Adventure. Do me a favor. Con consider, blah, 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 blah. consider subscribing, hitting the notification bell so you know when I post new videos. And I'll catch you on the flip side. Yeah. You dang hillbillies! <laughs>